My name is Elizabeth Müller. I'm the head of the electromicroscopy facility at PSI. And I'm working in this field since, meanwhile, 34 years. I'm still fascinated by it. It's a wonderful topic. Um, so my name is Emilia Pogosian. Uh, I'm uh, currently a scientist uh, at the electron microscopy facility at Polsha Institute. Of course, the most interesting thing is always the one you're working on. <laughs> so at present, we're absolutely enthusiastic. We have started two main topics regarding including or being made possible actually by the latest detector developments. And that is one uh, electron diffraction for structure solution, which I have already mentioned. Um, there you basically do a tomography in reciprocal space to do a solution of the respective crystal structure. And well, there the speed is important. We are talking about several hundred frames per second at least, otherwise you will destroy your uh, crystal before you have the measurement done. And uh, that was really fascinating because originally we had believed that this was just not possible because different from X-rays, electrons have strong interaction with matter, we have multiple diffraction uh, events, and we thought, well, we can't quantify that. But for good luck, some people were courageous enough uh, to really try it out and it turned out that this is possible. That is really exciting if you have crystals down to a few 10 nanometers and you can really determine the structure of this material, which can be very relevant, be it in the field of nanoparticles. Well, they are often even in the range down to few nanometers. Uh, or for medical applications, if you have new molecules, which could be uh, used for drugs, you need to characterize them, you need to know is it the right one or not, is it poisonous or is it helpful. Um, structure characterization of proteins, so again, where can drugs attack uh, against some diseases. This is one of the very important fields which are a highlight at the moment. I'm very excited to recently work on um, two different types of methods. Uh, actually, various types of methods. Uh, on one side is electron diffraction and its applications both in material science and biology, and on the other side for this dam. Uh, neither of the methods wouldn't be possible to the extent they are at the moment without the detectors and without uh, the development of detector technology, uh, in particular hybrid pixel detectors. They wouldn't be available also um, if not uh, having such an exciting uh, environment at PSI, um, collaborating with groups that are actually world leaders in developing the detectors, as well as having an opportunity to collaborate with a company, Vectris, uh, that actually has the history in developing hybrid pixel detectors for X-rays and now recently also for electrons. For the STEM, including tachography, uh, this is really absolutely fascinating because uh, it gives a lot of new possibilities we just didn't have before. And um, it releases also in some way uh, the complication we had. So before, if you wanted to, in scan mode, uh, detect different properties of a material, we went for dark field stem, we went for bright field stem, we had differential phase contrast, if we wanted to see some electromagnetic uh, or effect of the electromagnetic fields, magnetism in a material, electrostatic fields. But for every of these techniques, you needed a separate detector, which costs, of course, uh, quite something. And some of the detectors exclude each other. So that means you can take a data set only with one at a time because the scattering range, scattering angle is uh, overlapping. So you can use only one of the detectors. And that means if you have a beam sensitive sample, uh, bad luck, you have one measurement and the sample is gone. So you can decide before, okay, I take this method or the other one, but not together. Or maybe by evaluating your data, you only say that actually another technique would be interesting as well, because you did not realize that this material had this or that property. And with 4D STEM, you solve this problem. You take one data set, which covers a large angular range. And like this, you can do 
an on-the-fly uh, evaluation of your data. And if you see, ah, but yeah, it would be interesting to evaluate this or that range of scattering angles, you can do that from the same data set. So one data set is enough. Also for beam sensitive samples, you have no problem that your sample is gone after the first data set because you have included all the angular range you might need and you have only one detector instead of three or four different detectors uh, and have this one data set, which you can come back still after five or 10 years if you want. Usually it's faster, of course, but you can check again what is in this data. Can we get something out we didn't think about before? And um, especially tachography, uh, where you do a phasing, you overcome the loss of phase you usually have in electron microscopy and imaging in general. Uh, it gives you a lot of new possibilities to work on material in a way you couldn't do before. So these are the most exciting projects at the moment. Another topic or another method that I um, am excited to, to work on is uh, stem tomography, currently not uh, widely available in Switzerland. And uh, I think the potential of it is in its power to um, fill up the gap uh, between volume to resolution as we have uh, in electron microscopy, we go for high resolutions and relatively small volumes, and with X-rays it's a bit other way around. So stem tomography actually gives us an um, opportunity to, to fill this gap in, in the volume and still get a, a nanometer range resolution on our object of interest.